Oh, there we go. Well, now I have to add him. Okay, oh, it's, oh, it's working. Good. Awesome. Okay. Hey. Hey. Yeah, I, I think I was like logged into a different account. I, we don't need all the details, but I, you know, but uh, I'm here now. <laughs> How you doing? Good. Uh, yeah. Where's uh, Where's Eric at? Is he still just needs a couple minutes? Oh, um, I kind of just assumed he was here already. <laughs> well, he's in the Discord. I just I haven't seen him hop in. Probably setting up his uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah he's, he's on Mad Gentleman's live stream, so we're good. All right, yeah, that does happen sometimes. <laughs> All right. But, um, uh, you know, in honor of, of your most famous, at least on this channel's um, senatorial ad, um, I thought this was the most appropriate background for us to talk to you with. Wait, you know, I can to make the bombs gay. How do, how do I see the other background? Oh, here, I see. I see you've got the rainbow background. Yeah, you got it now. <laughs> yeah, you got yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. Oh, my camera's not on either. Okay, let's let's see what's going on. Yeah, you just have to manually cut the camera on. There, there you go. go. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Now, that's my, I'm going to move us into politics. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's the shitty camera. One second. I can tell. Are we live already? Yeah, so we're we're Twitch streamers, so okay. it's a little bit different than like YouTube and things like that. It's a it's a totally different medium. Like you know, you got to go live, you got to build an audience up. Um, yeah, it's a it's it's it, you know it it takes some getting used to. I think. Crotch mic, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that well, does I look so much better. Uh, yeah. It's Whoa. A lot better. And uh, the the I I <laughs> the microphone. Well, as I had it here, and then I was on a show the other night, and I was like causing some echo, and I haven't fixed that problem yet. So I was like, well, what if I just hold the mic microphone in my lap? <laughs> just like, let's try that. That's how I used to do it. Yeah. Uh. So well, I don't know. Let's just start. I don't, I don't know where, I don't know where Eric is. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I guess we can, so we have a whole list of questions to go through. Um, you know, I asked if I, I asked Eric, cause I, I think I'm mostly been talking to Eric over the Twitter DMS. Um, yeah. the first thing I guess is to the audience. Um, we're Fabian Liberty, uh, <laughs> the duo anarcho capitalist stream. Um, second largest anarcho capitalist in Twitch, as far as we know, um, which is, you know, not saying a lot about our size, but is saying a lot. <laughs> in another way um mises caucus members um as well as you know lp supporters tacitly you know we're a little bit more radical than your than your typical libertarian so there's sometimes we're like mm, yeah we're not going there with you um but for anyone that doesn't know and of course i'll allow jeremy kaufman to 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 introduce himself and once erica gets here um allow him to introduce himself as well um this is the famous these are the guys that were the reason i reached out is i didn't know that we were going to get to talk to jeremy kaufman i just wanted to talk to the libertarian party new hampshire twitter team because these were the guys that started it all in terms of just being principled and being radical on twitter instead of this bullshit of like um you know oh the libertarian party mean you know realizes that the war on drugs is a problem and the better policing with the war on drugs they started tweeting out you know child labor laws let's get rid of them and people were like yo what the fuck <laughs> and uh and these were the most based people and i was like i've got to talk to these people i hit up eric and uh he was like you want to talk to jeremy kaufman too and i was like fuck yes so why don't you introduce yourself jeremy Sure. Yeah, I live in New Hampshire. I'm on the board of directors as the Free State of the Free State Project. Um, I'm not. I'm running for um, U.S. Senate as a Libertarian Party candidate from the state of New Hampshire. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not someone who's one to apologize for believing in the principles of, of libertarianism. I think that's a mistake to think that you need to apologize for that. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I guess I can't say that I'm like just a regular guy, but like I'm, I'm more of a reg, you know, I'm like a pretty regular guy. You know, I play video games. I, uh, I, I work, I do some work. I raise a family and, uh, I'm a libertarian, you know, and I, I, something that Eric and I and, and everyone in New Hampshire is very optimistic about is that like, Hey, we can really, um, you know, we have this chance to see, uh, libertarianism happen you know, in our lifetimes uh, because of everything that's going on in New Hampshire. So, you know, we, we're privileged as an, as a good way of putting it. I like that word, you know, we're mm. privileged. I mean, uh, so we're privileged. We're here in New Hampshire and I'm trolling a little bit and uh, you know, like we don't, we don't have to <laughs> hold back. And so we don't. And it's, it's um, it, that lets us have some fun uh, but it's also part of a very serious effort. You know, what's going on in New Hampshire is very serious. So it's not like we're like, that's, I mean, that's like one of the few things, like I get it, you know, people don't like some of the stuff or whatever, but like that, the idea that we're not serious, like that's like one of the few things that can bother me or well, mm. like, I'm like, you idiots, like you can't, you can claim a lot of things. You can't claim that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. We just do it. We just have some fun. I mean, we, we have a lot I think of you're fun. Being, I think Hampshire. you're being modest because you're leaving out an important thing. What am I, what I leave Library. Out? Library.com. Sure. Yeah, sure. Of course, you know, I've built, uh, I've built some software that's used by, you know, millions of people every day to, <laughs> to, to share content and information or, well, I, you know, I, people, I, I can, and I don't mean that they're not like unrelated, but like my work and my politics are like fairly separate. Right. Cause like politically, if I learned that someone is a socialist, I'm like, get away from me. Right. But like <laughs> when it comes to building software, if they're a socialist, like, I don't care, right? Like, I want my software to work well for a socialist, you know? So, like, I'm not, that's one of the things I like about the sort of New Hampshire, I'm just, like, saying random shit, and you guys can cut me off, but uh, one of the things I like about the New Hampshire strategy is, like, I don't have to, because, you know, I think socialism or communism or these kinds of ideas, I don't think they're going to work, but, like, I don't, when, when you're, when you're trying to make all of America libertarian, you, you're like, you're kind of like implicitly threatening to people who disagree with you. When you're trying to make New Hampshire libertarian, which it already is, you know, the most libertarian yeah. state in the country. It's like, it's like, I'm not bothering you, you know, socialists in California. Like, you know, you can get those awful libertarians. You can get them away from you. They don't have to be your neighbors anymore. Those gross, disgusting people who believe in individual rights and individual choices. I mean, how repulsive. Um, you know, get that get that person away from you, and and you know, so I, I that's one of the things I like is it's it's like it's really the smallest. It's the it's a humble request. You're not saying that all of America should be libertarian. You're saying, hey, well, like, look, can we have like some space where where where, where things can be libertarian? I, you know, I I kind of like that aspect of it. Um, I don't know how we got here. I think I was just kind of. Yeah, Rebel. no, we're, I mean, just kind of the whole point of this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, I think the thing is, is, you know, we we started in the Twitch space in the Twitch politics space because we recognized that in this space, it was about 90 percent Marxist socialist sock them. Right. Yeah. And despite we knowing like, OK, whatever platform we're going to start on, there's going to be a lot of censorship. There's going to be an uphill battle. Right. Um, or we're going to go to Odyssey or Rumble and the, the market share is going to be really low. And it's not really where the battleground is just yet. Um, you know, so when we came here, like we kind of understood that. And, um, you know, oh fuck, where was I going with this? I'm a little bit starstruck, I apologize. Uh, uh, yeah, so like when we started here, you know, um, you know, we kind of knew that it was gonna be like a different thing, but because we're kind of pushing that in and there's not a lot of libertarians here, I think any other libertarians that do like interviews and things like that, they're used to like a YouTube medium or other mediums that are just kind of yeah. a little bit different than Twitch. And like, you know, we're really hoping to, to, to get more people interested in Twitch because you know, it's, it's another Avenue for, for fighting online. Uh, yeah. but eventually we'll get kicked off and we'll end up on rumble or Odyssey. <laughs> no, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, and, and, you know, I mean, gamers like libertarians, I mean, they're a very oppressed class of people, you know, so. <laughs> And they also have the same difficulty getting girlfriends. Uh, <laughs> Eric is, Eric is, tr set, he DM'd me and was like, how do I join? And I told him how to join the live stream waiting room and he hasn't answered me. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, some yeah, yeah. technical difficulties here. So I guess we'll, um, we'll steer away from the Twitter oh. stuff 
and 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 kind of go because we had some questions for you and some questions more like for kind of for the Twitter. Also, how long do you have? Um, probably until about like I've got like thirty to forty minutes. Okay, so we'll go to like eight forty, and then we'll open it up to chat for a couple of their questions if that's okay. Yeah, and we'll kind of just tailor it that way. If has good questions, I'll stay longer. You know? Oh, there so, you go. I'm, I, we have a pretty, no, we'll we have stay, a pretty but... smart, we have a pretty smart. Um, uh, I, believe, I will say, I'm all for quality of audience, not quantity. You know, I've been on some of these shows, and it's like there's a bunch of people, and they're like, everyone's. I don't. I, this is no, no one's got anything good. Yeah, you know, so I don't care. I don't care how big how big your audience is. You know. It's about it's about talking to talking to good people. Yeah. So you know, and you guys, I, I get the impression um, that Eric Eric's more of a boomer than I am. He's like texting me about this. <laughs> he runs the Twitter account. This is a guy that basically runs the Twitter account, and he's he's a tech boomer. Twitter's, Twitter's boomer tech. It just got bought by like a sixty five year old man. I mean, it's it's. I have old Elon Musk is shit. Yeah. Jesus, being rich must look good. No um. Wonder. I wonder he ran away from Amber Heard. He's okay, so over this shit. So we, we we only we have a bunch of questions. So I guess we'll get into some of the um some of the more pointed ones. Uh, softball to begin with. How do you feel about the the New Hampshire Bears? That New story Hampshire. that gets spread by every left wing person trying to make fun of like New Hampshire is like the story of that town that got overrun with bears, and this is what libertarianism does. I, I how do you how's that trigger you when you hear that? It, it doesn't. It's a badge of all. I mean, because like this is what this is what they do. I mean, it's a bit of like a different technique, I guess, in the sense that like normally they they find it's like, and not that they don't do this one, but it's all about you know someone's a, a racist or a bigot or whatever. Um, but I mean, this is totally. Uh, it's it's not a story that has any basis in fact, right? It's it's this it's this completely generated narrative. Uh, for political purposes and so that they're willing to take that time and to spend those kinds of resources on us um you know i i think it's a it's a huge boon i mean like because the facts are uh, you know the 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 county grafton where purportedly all these bad things happen they're still regularly electing free staters um, there's multiple elected free staters from that town um so you know they don't have any kind of bad rep um there uh mm -hmm. and the the whole notion of like bears attacking the town there's a good youtube video debunking it for like people who want to well, like, get into the degree yeah. but but like basically like the libertarians weren't even allowed to shoot the bears yeah i, so, I read that they weren't allowed yeah. to kill the bears because of like hunting regulations from the right. federal they weren't allowed to change their uh trash cans so that yeah. they could like lock down their trash cans so that like they would stop eating you know getting toxoplasmosis and, you know, from like, you know, eating cat poop or like, you know, just coming in because of free food. I just, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd open up with that. How you doing, Eric? Um, Eric, Eric Sawyer yeah. uh, had a little bit of a tech boomer moment. You got to unmute your mic to speak on the screen in the window. There I you am go. officially a tech boomer. <laughs> yeah. Sorry Why don't you introduce that. yourself for just a second? Uh, real quick, I'm Eric, Eric Sawyer. I'm the chair of the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire's Communications Committee. Um, I'm also one of four or five organizers for the New Hampshire Mises Caucus. So um, a guy named Sean Brennan is pretty much the lead guy over there. Mm. And um, yeah, and so that's basically it. I run the social media for LPNH. Eric turned 57 on Thursday. Oh, God, anyone... you look great. <laughs> Happy birthday. No, no. 39. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Grab one. Yeah. Both. And I'm, I'm also running a couple, a few um, pages for Jeremy's campaigns, a few social media pages. Well, good luck. Thanks. Eric's good at it. Eric built all the following for LP and H. He he did the Hornburger. He was involved. I'm allowed to say that that you're involved with the Hornburger yeah. Oh, yeah. campaign. Yeah, I ran um, Jacob Hornburger's all his social media in 2020 while he was trying to get the LP nomination. That's awesome. That's that's amazing. I had no idea. That's about the time I started kind of getting involved with, with the LP and like. About a tech, you want to talk about a tech boomer? I talked to Jacob Hornberg. He didn't know how to do anything. <laughs> I get that vibe. Yeah. I'm on my way. I run a tech company and I still feel like I'm on my way. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, grab one. Yeah, I got it. Just, uh, all right. So this is one for both of you guys. We're curious what you 
what, especially Jer uh, Jeremy, since you're running for Senate, but we see a lot of conservatives finally kind of waking up, pulling their head out of the sand. Um, you know, we have people like Steven Crowder and uh, Ben Shapiro, you know, these ultra war hawks, um, despite never joining the military, um, you know, claiming to be libertarian or libertarian leaning. Uh, and they're calling out this Marxism and this cultural Marxism and uh, transformative social emotional learning in schools. How do we get them to stop voting for the GOP? How do we convince them that the LP is the way to go? You don't need to care about losing uh, about the GOP losing anymore. That's a that's a complicated question, um, and it, it it's to me the answer starts with thinking about like if the LP is at two percent, you know, who are the people that are getting you to five and ten percent? Um, you know, because the truth is a lot of the people that you named, they're very motivated by their personal success. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they've got to see something in it for them. If you're talking, honestly, if you're talking about people, so you're, you're saying like, what's going to get Steven Crowder or Ben Shapiro to support the LP. It's not a question of policy. It's a question of having the momentum and the and the sort of like cultural trends or that kind of, of thing. Um, you might be able to get them to endorse things that you've said, right? Like if the if the LP uh, you know starts backing Dave Smith or uh, or even some things that Spike does or whatever, you know, I could see the LP reaching a place where someone like Ben Shapiro says positive things about them. Yeah, but the, like, I, I, I think we're yeah. off just a teeny bit. I think yeah. what we meant to say is we're seeing a shift in language and ideas in the conservative party, and we're yeah. seeing a lot more paleo lib thought from conservatives in general, and we're seeing them, you know, we're seeing people like those people having to play to them like, oh, I'm kind of libertarian on some things. And it's yeah. like those people that are still stuck that are paleo libs, right? Like they just as easily could be on our side. How do we reach those people and be like, guys, you gotta get away from these these Republicans that have been losing for a hundred years. Like what what's your message to those people stuck between the GOP and the Libertarian Party that won't take that that plunge? Right. I mean, I, I you know <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, Eric. I, I was just gonna say I think you need a a good strong candidate like Dave Smith running a national campaign and you just keep injecting yourself into the into the culture and you know keep putting that message out you you, you can't have something like Joe Jorgensen I think you need somebody you know putting out a bold message hmm. yeah, actually so if I can follow up on that you both mentioned Dave Smith I love Dave Smith um he's probably the biggest per or he's the main reason I started calling myself a libertarian as I was kind of falling in love with part of the problem and his work. Um, do you think stuff like Legion of Skanks is going to be a problem on the national stage? No, I don't. I don't. I think it's, I think that stuff's crazy. I mean, I think that those things are less of a concern than they've ever been. Um, I mean, and you can look at, you know, how many things they tried to throw at, uh, you know, Trump that didn't stick. And I think this is, this is the part, this is sort of like the political trend that's kind of the weirdest. Uh, and that I don't even know exactly how the libertarians take advantage of it, but like every, I mean, basically every institution has become left wing or at least more sympathetic to the left wing like so many institutions that used to previously be neutral or in the middle and this results in the right wing it's not clear to me that it makes the right wing more libertarian by the way i'm not no. claiming that um i think it makes the right wing more populist i think it aligns the right wing with the libertarians a little bit more in the sense that they are it's not even underdog is the wrong term but they're like much more um they're they're more outside of these power structures and so there's an alignment that kind of comes from that um but um it's a very i mean in general i mean i think we really are going through a political era that's like it's it's very abnormal we're seeing something we're seeing some real shifts happening and i do think there's an opportunity for the lp to capture some of these people 
you know, by um, by being very strong and by collecting some of them. But I think that actually people like some of the big names, they're going to be laggards here. They're not going to be leaders or at best they're going to be middle of the pack. Um, because really what you're talking about is people who are more up and coming, tapping into a current that's not currently, um, you know, kind of being captured. And then those people, and then those people send a signal the same way, the same way that some sort of upstart in business would send a signal to established competitors that, hey, there's something here to this strategy. That's the same kind of thing you see with this, these idea markets, you know? And so, so someone like Ben Shapiro, he's not going to be an out there kind of guy. He might, if he sees some kind of idea getting traction, he's savvy and he might leap on it. But at this mm. point, he's got a whole brand. He doesn't need to, he's not, these people aren't going to go first. Ben Shapiro is never going to go first. Um, oh, people for sure. are go first, you know, for sure. so, so people like, you know, Dave, he's building an audience by going first, you know, Spike's building an audience by going first. And, uh, you know, uh, and so I do think you want people like that who are trying to build their audience in that direction. And then that can kind of pull other things with it. Yeah. I, yeah. I so think oh, they stay sharp enough to, you know, I, I've even heard him say before, like they, they bring up the Legion of Skank stuff. He's like, what? he'll just come back with, you want to talk about some off-color joke I made five years ago while, you know, the government just spent $7 trillion and, you know, they're a starving campaign in Yemen. He'll just flip it right on them. He's, right. you know, he's just... You yeah, know, I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like, oh, you know, like, it's like people yeah, complaining I don't think about that'll phase them. No. Plus, you're trying to tap into this, to these, you know, the people who are less concerned with political correctness, that kind of thing. Like, I, you know... I, it, it, it's a fine line to walk, and I'm not going to even say that LPNH has, has played it correctly 100% of the time. <laughs> but part of what you're trying to do, like, it's actually to your benefit to say some things that, like, to this this class of people that are, you know, especially reserved or, you know, prissy or whatever, you know, like, and, and if if you're getting them upset, you're actually sending a signal to the right kind of people that you're like, hey, I'm on the other side of these people. Um, and that's, you know, th th that's part of what can be, um, you know, that's part of what can be beneficial in terms of when you're building up a third party. So one of the things that people talk about when they talk about libertarian candidates is that like they hear a lot of no, they hear a lot of, I won't support this. I won't support that. I won't support this regulation. I won't support this tax cut, et cetera, et cetera. And so like, you know, perfect world scenario. You know, Jeremy Kaufman is, you know, sitting in the hallowed halls of Congress, right? What is like, what if, if, what positive bill would you write, right? What piece of, of government legislation would you put forward as part of your policy, hoping to get sponsors that like you think might actually be able to pass? And it can be repealing something just like what, like, what would you do besides just veto bills and say no to government? Yeah, well, uh, so I'm not going to say that I wouldn't try this kind of thing. I'm not at the same time. I'm not I'm not convinced that it's possible. I think politics at the national level is very controlled by the parties. Like, I don't think the situation with Congress and so on is that like, even if the, is that these people have, you know, individual political preferences, but are, you know, still open minded people, you know, that are voting their conscience and you can change their minds. I mean, I think that's mostly fake. I mean, if you, if, if you want to look at issues, you know, where Congress is sort of the most out of step with Americans, um, I would say like the drug war is probably the top issue where what Congress does is so unpopular mm -hmm. uh, with the people at large. And so I think things in that area are like your best bet to, to try to to force something here. But I, but I think that it's, I, I think, and I'm not trying to like be a, be pessimistic because like, I promise you I'll create, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll create more positive change than anyone. You know, um, I will go in there and make some real noise and really attempt to force some of these things to actually get voted on. But just like being pragmatic at the same time, I think it's pretty hard. Yeah. In, in line with that, you know, how do you guys feel about this? Mark and I have often said that, you know, we believe that probably the best short-term strategy for the LP is to 
target local executive positions, such as sheriff's offices, treasurers, things of that nature, um, for that very reason, because of the popularity of libertarian ideas, especially when it comes to police, both from protecting Second Amendment rights as well as ending the war on drugs and stuff like that. Like, what do you think is the best, the best positions no, that, to target that, in the short term? That's the right. That's the right path. I mean, that's the main goal of the Mises Caucus. I mean, you see a lot about Dave Smith, but you know, his if he runs his campaign is just basically going to be a messaging tour. But the main work is done on the local level, trying to get elected to, you know, um, city council or sheriff or something like that. You know, trying to build from the ground up. Yeah. Um, Mark, did you want to grab one? Hold on one second. <clears throat> All right. Uh, actually, the one I want to ask, I kind of need you to ask. Okay. Uh, well, it's uh, it's the first one on our list for Eric, so I'll just ask. Um, oh how yeah, do we, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll go into that. So yeah, uh, you know, you, you guys have done a lot of like spicy tweets, right? Um, you know, and and again, I, I kind of already referenced one of them, which was the child labor tweet, the one that. The one that kind of like pissed off so many people, but you know, like yeah. made impressions, made a lot of noise, made a lot of audience. And I myself, you know, like I did a debate and you know, we defended getting rid of child labor laws and it, and it made, I think there was a couple thousand people and like they were losing their mind. Like what, what was it about the strategy that spoke to you from like a Mises caucus and libertarian perspective to start taking more hardline approaches and saying the things that are maybe not like politically expedient to say? Well, I'll let, uh, yeah, you take a long time. I've heard you talk about it before the child labor law. And the result. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I think this is one where it's, so I actually think this is one of the best ones because this is one where there is a substantial um, amount of the populace that does believe that, you know, work is good for you, work is educational. Um, that you will learn more, uh, you know, in, in these kinds of contexts than in a lot of sort of traditional educational contexts. And, I, you know, one of the things that we're looking to do is to find messages that, and this is that, that kind of walking the line, is where if you can find something that your opponents will amplify for you, where a lot of people actually agree, uh, with your underlying message. That's the sweet spot in terms mm. of, of these kinds of messages. And that doesn't mean the majority of people agree with you. It just means that a substantial number do because you're at 2%, right? So if there is something where only 20% of people agree with you, but that 20% is not represented and you can get your opponents to amplify the message, then that's a victory because now those 20% will hopefully have more affinity for you. And in the case of encouraging work, I mean, Fox News wrote an article about it. You can go into the comment thread and it's a bunch of people being like, yeah, kids, kids do need to work more, right? It wasn't, you know, the Fox News audience was not people who were like really offended by this. They, they supported the, the Libertarian Party position. Mm. Um, so to me, that was one that was, uh, uh, you know, that was a victory. And I also think that, uh, you know, <laughs> one of the things that the Libertarian Party can do is, is to push the sort of like envelope of what is considerable or what can be discussed. Um, it's why their response on lockdowns, you know, was so disappointing to me because I felt like if they had been stronger on some of this COVID stuff, like that was a chance to be, even if it's an unpopular position, objectively speaking, you're at 2%, you know, so you're as unpopular as you can be just about, yeah. right? And so, and th th this is part of the, like, m the people do not vote in this way where they're like, oh, these are the three parties and I like their policies the best, so I'm going to vote for that party. The party has to be able to win. If you're at 2%, you're not going to get people to vote for you because your policies are better, because that's not how people vote. Like if you're at 
even if your policies are better, a reasonable person is going to say, well, your policies might be better, but only A or B can win, so I'm gonna vote for A or B. You have to get people who are so pissed off that they wanna stick their thumb in the eye of both A and B. Or you've gotta get people who are, you know, otherwise like so passionate about your thing that they wanna send that signal for the next cycle. Or, you know, all these various reasons. But this, you know, one of the thing, one of the ideas that I think we really, really need to disabuse is that politics works by people being like, oh, I look at all the policies and I pick the policy that I like the best and I don't consider these other factors. I mean, it's, it's just ludicrous. And so when you're at 2%, one of the fun, most fundamental things the Libertarian Party needs to be asking is, will this get someone to vote for me when I'm at 2% and everyone knows I'm at 2%, mm. right? And that might mean saying things that are unpopular with 80% of people because that 20% is underrepresented and will actually join you. Yeah, it, you know, yeah. just just hearing that, I was thinking about, you know, the COVID, you know, kind of communications from the LP, and they were mostly like silent during the initial lockdowns and stuff. And the only time that they were willing to like take a libertarian stance was when Texas was going to enforce its own mandate against the federal mandate. And it was like, really, this is the hill you chose to die on? Like you didn't say anything about it, and and now hearing it from you. It's kind of obvious, like what they were trying to do was only bring up libertarian policy when it was already in the majority and popular, and it was just kind of alienating its base. Yeah, I'll, so I'll give you, I'll, I was thinking about, I seriously spent probably 20 minutes thinking about this. This is embarrassing, and maybe in some regard, but I'll, I'll share. that the, the Libertarian Party tweeted, and I'm paraphrasing, but it's very close to this. There's something like, like happy earth day, you know, build nuclear power, right? And uh, and I don't think this was a bad tweet. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to like come at them for this because I agree that if you support, uh, you know, having a, a, a green planet, if you care about the environment, you should support nuclear power. So, and you, you know, totally not like super critical of this tweet. But I think like part of the problem is that a lot of people hold their positions like not specifically because of the policy like if you look at people who are super concerned about the environment some portion of them might be like you know sort of like nerdier types who really are genuinely concerned about the scientific principles but if, the majority of them are people who are attracted to the set of beliefs because of what it means in terms of who are the good guys and who are the bad guys and by the way, I don't think libertarians are like sort of any better in this regard. Like libertarians want the good guys to be, you know, productive people and and the bad guys to be, you know, people who aren't, uh, who are, you know, who aren't trying or who are defecting or whatever, but we're, you know, maybe more okay with um, what happens to some of those people or whatever. I don't know. I'm getting sidetracked. The point is that like, you know, there's this sort of level one set of ideas or level zero about how politics works, which is like, Oh, people just have these preferences and then they well you know if you care about the planet then therefore nuclear power is the way to do it and i do think there's real people out there who fit that who are like i'm concerned about the planet and um and you know they could be convinced that they should support nuclear power but i think a lot of people who are attracted to environmentalism aren't doing that because they are Here's you know, the deal, genuinely guys. concerned the about the planet you That's not the way fucking that leave me was. alone yeah and did that it's all work? these other things no. so stupid and so, me. like you know i don't and but this i'm not trying to reach i'm not trying to persuade someone of, of something this is just like me about politics and about like the sort of like the fact that a lot of these political positions they're not held because of this sort of like genuine concern about the stated problem. I mean, COVID's a great example of this. It's not, you know, people, the reason, the people who adopted the, the super conservative, the conservative position, wear the mask and all this stuff, it's like, because their, their orientation is entirely about, let's make sure people don't get hurt, you know, let's make sure, you know, this kind of thing. And like, so thinking that it's logical arguments with these people, it's not, it's not logical arguments. The average person, who loves Earth Day and is an environmentalist, but is against nuclear power. It's not a logical argument with that person. It's not a logical argument with the COVID person. And so, mm. um, 
these are just some some ideas that I was having when I was thinking about um, your libertarian messaging. Well, I still um, want to get to audience Q and A, and I don't want to take up too yeah, much sure. of your time. So, like sure. one kind of just curveball, right? As someone that runs library and stuff, um, you know, you always got to throw a curveball to the crypto bros, and then when you're talking about the libertarians. And so my question is, you know, where do you see the future of blockchain tech, as well as you know? decentralization i know everyone's talking about elon buying twitter and there's a lot of people that think like oh free speech is saved now because you know elon musk is buying twitter and like i wonder if that's more of like a band-aid and i wonder what your thoughts are is that really the way to go or do we really got to continue this fight towards thinking about blockchain technology decentralizing our internet creating platforms that host multiple different things so that getting deleted or you know canceled is like kind of less of an ability and and obviously this one's more for jeremy just because you know yeah. library ceo <laughs> yeah, yeah sure i mean I, I i definitely am still uh a big believer that web3 type solutions are the future mm -hmm. uh i think they fix a bunch of the problems i mean i think like elon Musk buying twitter is a good thing presumably i i can't be 100 percent confident in that but like it's presumably a good thing but i think that like you know part of the benefit of the sort of like web3 you know bitcoin blockchain approach is that you don't have to worry about those kinds of things um you sort of eliminate those kinds of concerns entirely and i think i also think and again i, I want to be clear that like I like Elon Musk. I'm very supportive of him buying Twitter and all of these kinds of things, but it's crazy. And this is what I was saying. It relates to something I was saying earlier about how like all the, there's no institutions left that have any kind of right affinity. Cause like Elon Musk is not a right wing guy. No. He's not a conservative. You know, he's and it's like, he's buying Twitter. But like he's left of center by like any reasonable standard. Um, he's not woke, which is funny. I mean, how how much that has become the defining axis. Like Elon Musk is not, he's not, it's not a conservative buying Twitter. It's not a libertarian buying Twitter. I mean, maybe he's more libertarian than average. I guess that's likely, but like he's pretty clearly in favor of like carbon taxes and redistribution and all of this stuff, you know? And so, um, it, part of it to me, it's like the fact that this is a victory shows how messed up the, the situation has become. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we do a lot of culture war stuff here, but we also do a lot of talking about philosophy. And I think conservatives are just now, and this isn't a question, just kind of an add on, you know, they're just now starting to see that the, you know, the Marxist and neo Marxist critical theorist kind of march of left-wing philosophy out of academia has infected a lot of these institutions for so long and i see a lot of conservatives just now being like oh my god crt's in the schools and they're like no it's not it's something else you know and it's like and i've been trying to tell conservatives like you know how you feel about alt tech well you should feel that same way about schools you should feel that way same way about these other things because these institutions like one DeSantis bill isn't going to fix this, right? Like these institutions are corruptible because they're state institutions. And so, you know, you know, obviously we're ANCAP, so we're a little bit further down the line, but we're saying like, get school vouchers, get, you know, get some torp of, you know, tax money shifted from schools to homeschooling, et cetera. Because I think, I, I think you're right. Like it's kind of a sad state of affairs that like one CEO that's like, you know, centrist left, buys Twitter and all of a sudden it's this giant cause for celebration. Yeah. Well, we're, I mean, I, living in New Hampshire, I mean, we're, I'm an optimist. I mean, that's the thing is like, mm. to me, and this is, yeah, in fact, I, I didn't mention this earlier in terms of like what the Libertarian Party should do. The Libertarian Party doesn't need to go all in on New Hampshire. Like there's a, like, there's a clear strategy, which is there are enough of us if we work together and concentrate in a smaller, in a sort of narrower fashion, then, you know, we can actually win and we're actually winning. Like the evidence is overwhelming. I mean, the, the hatred that libertarians face here from status, it's like, it's incredible. Um, like, 
you know, this isn't a place where things are getting worse. And so like, I mean, this is what we all need to be thinking about is, you know, how do we do this? I love the idea of there being some argument that's going to convince a bunch more people, but you know, there are enough of us that are convinced there's, there's, you know, uh, at least a couple million of us that are convinced and that's all it takes. That's yeah. all it takes. It doesn't take, you don't need to convince a hundred million people. A couple million is all it takes. Um, we just need to kind of, you know, believe it and be committed to it. So I have a, a question from the audience. Um, cause I mean, you know, you said you a little bit limited, so we're going to, we're going to get to that. Um, sorry, my, uh, my stream partner's computer crashed and he's, he's coming back. Um, the first question is, was Rothbard right about natural outlaws? Must the libertarian party be a big tent for leftist quote unquote libertarians who get scared by Hoppe and Kinsella? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't understand some of that uh, fear um, because I find it all acceptable, you know, like it seems to me that that sort of the sort of more left libertarians are very offended by some of the right libertarians, but the right libertarians don't, don't feel the same thing in the, in the opposite direction. Um, you know, I, I haven't seen, and I haven't read everything, you know, that these people have said, but like, I've never seen anything from Hop or, uh, can, or especially Kinsella that would somehow be like out of bounds. I mean, it feels, it feels very mainstream to me. And it's very weird to me how much hatred people have. Uh, for some of those people and because like look it's not exactly my flavor but you know I t just being honest I mean it's uh, but like I don't know it, it, um, what's the guy's name Robert Nozick uh, you know uh, anarchy utopian state who like I mean this guy's super mainstream he's like one of the most popular libertarian philo uh, philosophy professors and like if you look at what he lays out it's like it's pretty close to Hoppe and um and it's but everyone loves him. The same, all the people who hate. Um, I uh, think it's the German accent. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's. I think it's about the forcible removal of people he doesn't like. But that's part. Of, I mean, yeah, I guess so. I mean, for, but is it forcible removal? It's like to me, it's all about like voluntary community. I mean, this is what libertarians. I, I, it's crazy, and I think most libertarians get this, but like. A lot of people are not libertarian. Uh, a lot you of are an extreme are not, minority. Yeah, are not going to share your beliefs, and so it's like you know, part of what's beautiful about libertarianism to me is it accommodates all of these different perspectives. It allow it's a framework in which we can disagree and still have our own spaces. And, and but I meet some libertarians who are like, this is co what I believe is correct, and it's correct for everybody. And, and to me, like, I get along better with a communist who says, like, well, like, communism is for me, but it's not for everybody. You know, than a libertarian who's, who seems to think that, like, oh, I figured it out for everyone. I, I find that kind of, I get very, those kinds of people are like, oh, I, I have the right answer for everyone. It's very, uh, very concerning to me. It's, 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 it's the kind of thing I, I very much dislike. And so I think as libertarians, like we should be like, hey, because also this is the this is what's worked. This is how gay people uh, uh, achieve their rights. It's how other minorities achieve their rights. It's like they didn't say like, oh, we're objectively correct. They said we're human beings and we sincerely are this way or feel this way or whatever. And we are like you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think, like if libertarianism is going to happen at a national level, something like that, where you're like, look, I'm a libertarian. To me, the idea of being compelled to so to pay social security is really, really morally abhorrent and weird. And just let me out of it, you know. In the same way that, like, look, you know, hey, the fact that I'm attracted to men might seem insane to you, and you might think it's crazy, you know, whatever. Um, but it's my business, you know. Let me be, you know. And and so rather than you know, you're trying to convince everyone that social security is evil, versus just saying like, hey, I have this weird preference, you know, that you don't have to that just let me have my preference be satisfied. Um, you know, this is libertarians recognizing that, that like, hey, to most people, social security isn't offensive, even though it's really offensive to you. Fair enough. Any, any thoughts on that, uh, on the natural outlaws and the lefty libertarians there, Eric? Uh, what? 
Oh no, I'm I'm all set. I'll, I'll pass on that. I don't get into the. <laughs> oh, fair process. enough. Fair enough. Um, another question is, um, what do you think the like the number one policy or issue libertarians should be focusing on right now? If we had to pick like one thing to really drive, what do you think it would be? Nationally or. I mean, the, the question doesn't say nationally and, and considering the Americans affinity for national politics, even though libertarians really in the new free state project, people might look at it a little differently. Uh, yeah. Like nationally, what do you think is like the thing we should really push more than anything? Not getting into world war three. <laughs> Anti-war. Yeah. Well, yeah, particularly right now. Yeah, there's a lot of saber rattling with the Ukraine Russia situation, which is seems to be quickly becoming a Russia NATO NATO. Stop sending forty billion dollars worth of weapons and money every month, it seems like. Instead, you know, it's been about seventy something days and Anthony Blinken has yet to meet with Sergey Lavrov to talk about a peace deal. Instead they just keep sending weapons. It's a, it's almost like they wanna they want this war to be like another Afghanistan for uh, like the, the seven with the Soviet Union, they want to keep it going to you know knock down Russia, and you're risking a lot by doing that. I mm. think. No, that's a fucking good answer. It's a, it's usually the uh, the number one thing we look for is whether or not we'll like anybody. Um, have you considered divorcing moderation through an API, allowing a private filter market? And this is about library. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, that's essentially the, the direction that we're, uh, headed in. Um, you know, our, our goal is to build everything in a way that, you know, you're sort of making those, those personal choices for yourself and the, and the protocol is just kind of a, um, you know, kind of a dumb pipe or whatever. Um, so we're trying to avoid, uh, you know, kind of any decisions being, being forced on you. So that's definitely the the direction that we're headed in another question i find it kind of boring but at least it's unoffensive uh is um what what is it that libertarians can do that like no one else is gonna do like the gop or the democrats are never gonna support this um but like libertarians will what a, po a policy or something yeah, I mean, I'm assuming ending, like a policy ending, prescription. Ending the drug war, full stop. You know, legalize not just weed, but everything, stuff like that. And, mm, yeah, you know. for sure. Actual anti-war sentiment. Actual <laughs> anti-war sentiment, yeah. Um, yes, so um, it looks like we're kind of coming to a close. Uh, normally, we have higher numbers than this, and I expected this to double our numbers, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's hit or miss on Twitch. Uh, you kind of just got to roll with the punches. Um, I, I, you know, I mean, we have more of our own questions. Um, oh, I do have one last question. Um, what are your, what are their thoughts on immigration? Hmm. I'm, I'm for, uh, I'm for increased immigration. Like I see it, you know, running, uh, a tech company, how hard it can be for people who are totally quality, uh, people, you know, they can't make it to america mm. um i think it's like naive to not consider you know sort of second order effects in terms of how does this affect politics i mean this is this is i mean this is sort of the question that every libertarian needs to answer free staters need to answer it too you know um, which is like how do you even if you achieve something that's relatively libertarian you know how do you prevent it from becoming non-libertarian um, because to me, the realistic thing is that a lot of people don't care about politics, but among people who do care, um, I don't think the majority of them are libertarian. And I'm not convinced that you could rationally convince them to be libertarian. So to me, it's like, to me, I see libertarianism not about, as like about having some space where we can be, um, you know, how we want to be. And if, so if you if libertarianism is only being attainable that way, then you have to figure out how you can uh, sustain it. Um, but um, that said, I think like, 
Look, it's not like most Americans are libertarian, right? It's not like the average American is libertarian. You know, these kinds of things. So there clearly are a lot of people who uh, could be more productive in America, um, you know, and so what what right do we or does anyone have to kind of keep that person from coming here? Um, uh, you know, it gets it, it gets very it gets very complex. Like I, this is I mean, one of my positions that may be uh, quote, not libertarian, although I think it is, is that like, look, it's perfect. It, I think it's compatible with libertarian principles to say that if someone is literally a socialist or literally a communist in the sense that like then in being here, they are going to advocate and do everything they can to have things stolen from me. Like, I don't want that person to be my neighbor. It has nothing to do with their race or their ethnicity. Like I don't, but I don't want, I want, I want socialists away from me. I want a space where, you know, right. Like, so it's like, and that, that's not a universal principle. I think socialists and communists should have their own space. Maybe it'll be as great as they think it will be. I'm skeptical. Oh. Like, I don't want you, in my, <laughs> I don't want you in my space. Like I want a libertarian space, you know, to me, if libertarians had, you know, 10 square miles, like we'd have, uh, the most successful economy in the entire world. You know, it doesn't take very much. Yeah, when, when is, when is, when is, uh, New Hampshire getting their Lieberland? We're going full on Galt's Gulch up in here. Uh, yeah, no, like that's. I mean, open, yes. Open, open, board. I, uh, open uh, borders uh, for libertarians and closed borders for statists. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a, I like that's it. a slogan I, think that's I can a, get behind. That's yeah. an open borders policy I can get behind. Yeah. So I have a very specific question from a fellow uh, mass hole. Uh, I'm, I'm kidding, Angie. I know you're not a mass hole. Uh, the question I used the, to be a mass hole. The water is trash in southern New Hampshire. Could you abolish? Pen a chuck like you plan to do with the FDA? Question mark. <laughs> Is that true? I don't. I, I don't know. Even know enough about the premise to uh, to comment. Ah, <laughs> uh, now we see B- big Pinnachuk water is supporting yeah, is supporting uh, yeah. his campaign. He's not allowed to say anything. I mean, oh. the, the answer uh, like the government is um, it's small. Like you know, tax burden's very low and so on. But like. For the government that exists, like it's remarkably effective. From moving from Pennsylvania, it's like I didn't wait in line at the DMV. Like there aren't when I when in Pennsylvania when they do road work, I'm always there's always like ten people standing for one person working. Like you know I don't see that kind of thing here. Um, and so uh, you know I I think the government could be a lot better, but it's uh, you know it does feel like more effective or whatever. Yeah, I mean, and and whenever you guys are ready to tap Angela. out, let me know. But uh, I yeah. have another question, if you feel like answering. All right, we'll uh, do this. This will be the last one. Last all right, question. last one, last one. So this, last one. Okay. Um, are you? How do you guys feel about nuclear disarmament? Are you for nuclear disarmament or pushing for it? Uh, that's a, that's another tough one. Yes, but is it even possible? I mean. I mean, to me, nuclear weapons are like kind of like the country equivalent of guns in the sense that they allow like our weaker country mm. to achieve uh, sort of a, a force parity with a larger country. I mean, I'm very against nuclear weapons being dropped, but like if you think about how does a how does a very small nation defend itself from like a much more powerful militaristic nation? Like you're talking about weapons, you know, like nuclear weapons the same way that you know how does a 110 pound woman you know defend herself from a much and well one of the benefits of guns is it means that they're, they're they're on a sort of more level playing field and so i do think there's a possibility that nuclear weapons can serve that same kind of function where they allow like a sort of equilibrium of force which results in force not being used but that is like <laughs> i don't know if that's true <laughs> 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 I, I, I that's so both, true i can see both i can see both sides of, of this argument like the anti-war part of me says yes but like going off of what jeremy said you look at a country like like um libya you know as soon as they they gave they they gave up their nuclear weapons and you know a few years later the u.s and nato are you know destroying their country and Gaddafi's getting dragged through the streets and sodomized and assassinated and now it's you know you know, jihadist wonderland yeah or or i or you know something a little bit more of today 
I bet uh I bet if Russian nukes that were stationed in Ukraine had been turned over to Ukraine, uh we we'd, we'd be we'd all be a little bit wealthier with a little bit less inflation. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, principles need to be universal, right? So, you know, the US has to get rid of it if it's going to if if the world was going to attempt to have some sort of like no nukes moral standard, then like that would mean that no one can have nukes, you know. Um um, you know, so we're not we're not close to that. But truthfully, if I was a very small country bordering the U.S., like I don't know, that I'd get rid of my nukes. I mean, I'm just saying, like I don't know what I want, you know. Um, uh, so it's a it's a complex question. Nuking people is very bad, though. I'm against that. Don't, don't. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, you know, if you guys want to like have a little bit of an outro, pimp your stuff, pimp your website or anything. I really appreciate you guys coming and stopping by. Um, yeah, it's so much. It's it's nice to see something happening in the Twitch politics space. It's in, it, it, we, we're trying to break through and have another avenue, another place where where we can have wonderful discussions like this. And and I appreciate the discussion that you've been able to bring here. Uh, I'll say quickly follow um, at LPNH and yes. um, at New Hampshire Mises Caucus. And uh, if you want to follow me, I'm at Eric underscore hmt what, what was that one more time sorry you, you broke up a little bit i want to make uh, sure they can it's, it's uh at eric underscore nhmc new hampshire music office uh you can follow me on twitter at my full name uh jeremy kaufman um you can uh, also go onto my campaign website jeremy number four nh and join our mailing list uh, or donate because uh, we're doing uh, some more ads like the War is Gay one, the next one. Some good stuff coming out. Very effective use of your money. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, my real uh, plea or sort of pitch is like, look, if you're a libertarian, uh, anarcho-capitalist, whatever, I think that's a form of libertarian. We're the most extreme version. Yeah. We're the I final do. boss. Yeah. yeah. And I think I'm like basically there myself. Um, you've got to come check out what's happening in New Hampshire. Like you've got to visit. Uh, if you want help planning a trip, the Free State Project will help you. You can come out practically anytime. Um, it's it's there's a network for finding jobs. There's a net like there's an incredible network for people with families. So like wherever you're at in your life, like. It's really the place to be for libertarians. And you don't have to be entirely convinced of that, but just like, it makes sense, like just come out for a couple of days and check it out. And, you know, cause even if you think it's only five or 10% true, like it, you gotta check it out. And so, you know, come out to Pork Fest. It's not too late. There's still a couple of tickets left on sale and just, you know, come out and, and see what's going on in New Hampshire. Because like, I was a pessimist before being in New Hampshire and now I'm an optimist. So, you know, it can really change. Really God, I'd, love, I'd love to be an optimist. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just, I just love to go to Fort Fest. Quickly yeah. about that is that um, I grew up in Massachusetts and I became a libertarian in 2013, and I basically all my communications were online. Like I didn't have any libertarian friends. Then I got involved in Mises Caucus in New Hampshire, became an organizer, and now I'm plugged in with. You know, we get a Mises Caucus chat with over 100 people that, you know, I get home from work and there's like 375 messages. There's something going on every weekend in New Hampshire that's literally related, whether it's an event or just a meetup or, you know, just something going on. And you got press right around the corner, Liberty Forum every year. Pretty great. Heck yeah. So the final message is get your ass to New Hampshire and check it out. Yeah. See for yourself. Seeing is believing, right, folks? pork fest rules right. it's gonna be bigger than ever this year that's right all right well thank you so much for your time uh Thanks. i look forward to hopefully you know us all growing and us all speaking and seeing each other at more events and more libertarians rising up thank you <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen i was gonna outro with uh can't wait to call you senator kaufman but all right uh, yeah, you know what that would have been a better one that would have been a better one. Oh shit you just watched a clip from our twitch channel fabian liberty if you like content like this please like and subscribe here on youtube or go ahead and give us a follow on twitch.tv backslash fabian liberty